Hey everybody, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to install a 2014 to 2019 GM interior into our 67 to 72 trucks. I hope it helps. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Hope you enjoy. Uh, as you can see, I picked up a set of seats. These are out of a 2017 Silverado LTZ. It has the jumper flip up seat. Uh, that's a console when it's flipped down and it's like a metal hump seat when it's flipped up. I was kind of looking for the actual console, but they didn't, the junkyard around where I was looking didn't have one in decent shape. This is the console. You can see it's got a cup holders, upper console with some USB stuff and it flips up to be a seat and then there's also some storage underneath it so it's it's pretty cool I found one but it was kind of busted up broken latch that sort of thing and online they want like 1800 bucks for a set of these things and you usually got to get them with the back seat and you can't see them in person so anyway I kind of took a roll uh, chance on these they were filthy when I saw them they actually it was a it's a yard where you don't pull the stuff yourself which sucks because the people who pull them yeah I mean it's just one of those things for 600 bucks I figured I'd take a chance the driver's side I didn't know it when I looked at it but it's actually bent the frame is bent, uh, but the good thing is, is the airbags are still intact. One issue I'm running into is um, there's a pretty substantial amount of wires going to these. So they're all electric adjustments. So I need to figure out how to hot wire that, and I'd like to hot wire, figure out how to hook up the heated seat function. If it's simple enough, so we'll have to see about that. But <clears throat> anyway, today we're gonna look at my driver's seat. But you can see the back is bent and the, the chair kind of seems to be a little tweaked in the seat. I'm, I'm guessing when it was in the wreck, a heavy set person was in the seat. So when the car crashed and all the weight in the seat got caught by the seat belt and it flew forward it kind of tweaked the frame up a little bit so we're gonna disassemble this seat down to the frame for two reasons try and identify some of these wires and see where our frame has been so hopefully we can fix our frame um i've got to figure out how i'm going to retrofit this frame to my truck but uh I'll get to that when I get to that. Okay, so I've got the seat stripped, the airbag removed, and I've hooked up the seat to a 12 volt power supply. So you might notice in one of the clips that the bottom upholstery has a puncture in it. I worked out or tried working out those puncture marks and those indentations with a heat gun and water and uh, used a roller and it, I think one of them is is just about clear through the material so I couldn't get those marks out and they're pretty worn on the edges and the color and the stitching is is didn't match the upper half from the wear and there was a few edges that that the material is actually peeled off. So I replaced both bottoms in another video I put out this past week. I'll put the link in the description and put a card up if I can figure that out. If you wanna watch how to replace upholstery bottoms and tops on this kind of chair, I've got a video for that. But I got these replacement OEM type upholstery covers from a company called The Seat Shop. And they're excellent. You can't even tell the difference between the factory and theirs, the material and the patterns 
and the colors, they're perfect. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and check out that video. It's a great solution if you're looking for a set of seats, late model seats to put in a truck and they show some wear and tear on them. All of my motors are working. Now I'm going to start looking at how I'm going to bend the seat frame back. I'm glad I'm doing this because I didn't realize how wet the foam is. So what I'm going to do is take the leather and the foam apart on at least the other bucket seat. The console's probably safe because it was in the middle. Um, the doors had been taken off the truck. Well, I'll, I'll take the foam and the airbag and all that out of the other seat and probably spray the foam off with like Clorox and let it dry. And, and now I'm gonna try and figure out where my frame is bent and go from there. I spent about half a day with this lower frame that was bent up. And as I mentioned before, and those of you who are familiar, you know, there, there are so many different pivot points because there are so many different adjustments in this seat. It's got a front to back adjustment. The rear of the bottom of the seat comes up and down. The front goes up and down. You know, the back pivots. It's got a lumbar movement deal. So there are really so many moving parts and rotating pieces on this bracketry that even with it taken apart, I was having a really hard time figuring out where it was bent <clears throat> and where I could start to try and bend it back, you know. I bent the lower rails first, backed where they needed to be, tried working my way up, you know, and basically what I discovered it is it was bent in numerous different places, in different directions. And rather than spend the time to try and get it somewhat decently back to where I wanted it, I just decided for time's sake and frustration's sake, I would order a new one. Um, I probably could have gotten it for cheaper used, but that would have taken time. And then who's to say I wouldn't have the same issues. So I ended up just going to the dealership, buying a new base. It came with all the motors installed. Obviously it didn't have a harness, but that was fine. That was rather pricey. It was almost $400. So I will keep that seat frame <coughs> for the motors and parts that are in it. Just in case in the future I have any issues, I have those parts because they are probably fairly expensive to buy um, as well if they go bad. There are some parts out of the seats which I'm not going to use, which I'm going to get into now, which are also valuable. So I'm going to hopefully sell most of those to recoup some of my costs. This right here are all of the wires out of both harnesses that I've depinned and removed that are no longer necessary. These circuits are mostly safety circuits, uh, seat belt detectors, passenger seat sensor, uh, the old heater control wires, airbag wires, and that sort of thing. So I've gone through both harnesses and actually removed everything I did not need Underneath the passenger seat, there is a climate control module, which is part of the heated seat deal. So I, I'm not going to attempt to reutilize the old heated seats. These are the pads that are on the factory foam. I went ahead and removed those. I might reuse the plugs. With the new setup, <coughs> But I've removed all that. There is also a passenger detection unit, which is, it's, it's got a bladder in it. And when someone sits down on the seat, the bladder pushes a fluid into a sensor. And that sensor sends an electrical signal to the computer. 
which tells the computer that there's someone in that seat and that's what triggers the other safety functions and airbag stuff. So that I have removed and both seat side airbags I have removed as well. With all that being said, this is the amount of wire that you can pull out of those harnesses. This is what is left of the passenger harness. As you can see, when you're done, you go from all these wires to just, just two. So this will power your adjustments and you're good to go. So what I'm going to do now with this harness for the passenger side is loom it back up, reinstall it in the seat, and we can go ahead and put the seat back together. This is the driver's side harness. What you will end up with, again, this is out of a 2017 model seat, but I believe this will be the same from 14 to roughly 19. But you will end up with a ground and two power wires because there is actually a board inside of that box which you need to power two separate circuits in order to use all your adjustments. So there were a substantial amount of wires that came out of this harness and actually one, two whole plugs I could remove from that terminal. And I did this because of a couple reasons. Number one, if I ever needed to work on these seats in the future, I didn't want to have all these wires underneath my seats and not know what they were for or if they were needed. So if there's ever an issue, what I have here is only what I need. And then the second reason was because there is a computer in here and I don't want to invest the time to figure out how it all works and all that, I was worried that I'm energizing this board and I don't know if that board is going to be sending current through any of those other wires. So because of that, I didn't want to risk a short or worse, like a fire underneath one of my seats. So that is why I've gone through and meticulously removed all the unnecessary circuits. So if you're going to do this, I would recommend it. It just makes it cleaner. It'll make it easier. So I am also going to reloom this harness. I'll tell you that it is a little bit painstaking to remove the cloth tape from all this, but it's worth it. So you can use a heat gun, just heat it up a little bit and it unwraps. It will be a sticky mess, but you can use WD-40, you know, clean your hands off and, and the adhesive will come right off. I didn't wipe the adhesive off these wires just because I'm gonna wrap them back up anyway. I've got some different type of loom materials I'll use and I'll, I'll let you know what works best. But so this is, this is where we're at with the electrical. We've got it all figured out. <clears throat> as far as the heated seats, I will show in a minute what I'm doing for those, but I'll incorporate that most likely into a plug, the wiring for that, but it will be independent of this situation here. I just want to show real quick my finished harness for the driver's side seat. Uh, you can see I did a Deutsch connector and a single weather pack for the two powers in the ground that I have to control the driver's side seat. Because of the board, there's actually two power wires, which I showed before. Uh, <clears throat> one of the power wires is a much smaller gauge, so I ended, that's why I ended up doing a separate single weather pack for that. But I labeled and did clear heat shrink, which is how I'm gonna label all the rest of the truck just to make it easier. The factory heat strips in the seat, um, they have been damp and the wiring harness issue coupled with the fact that the factory seat heaters have three other, the switch up on the dash that you turn them on with they're controlled also with the BCM, 
and you also, the BCM talks to the climate control module underneath the passenger seat. So with all that complication, the control wires and the fact that, that the heat strips in the seats didn't really look that robust, I went on to Google and found these Dormans, which that's the part number 628-TEC-040. And I got these more importantly because there was a gap here. Now the instructions say you're not supposed to bend them, but there's really no way for you not to bend them at least one time because I've never seen a seat with one section where the upholstery is not attached. Like, you know, you don't have an entire section where you don't have an upholstery uh, attachment point. So anyway, they have these little clips, and these little blue strips clip into those. So I wanted to keep those open, so my seat cover went down in here and looked right. Um, so I was just barely able to trim that opening wide enough, and hopefully it's, it is wide enough or else this is not going to work. I had to cut a hole through for my new wire because the previous ones were actually three sections. They went across all three and then popped down that hole there. The first thing I did is put both bucket seats and the console in the truck with the all together with the foam and the covers on obviously <clears throat> and I got my spacing and when you're doing this at least what I did is get, I got my chair in the neutral position from front to back. And that ended up having the inside rail just even with the front rail because that was about the point which it had the most forward and backward adjustment. It was about in the middle. <clears throat> So as I was saying, I put a, a reference mark here and here as to about where I wanted the chair in the cab. With the back of the chair being in somewhat of a neutral position, which it's a couple inches off of the back of the cab. As you probably noticed before, there were some brackets on the chair rails that I had to cut off because that's a 17 inch steering wheel and my clearance is pretty low. <clears throat> so I'll probably end up changing the steering wheel later, but I wanted to maximize my clearance, which meant I needed to get this seat as low as I could. Now, I could have modified the hump and gotten about another inch <clears throat> But that would have been a lot of work just for that inch. And I'm not a big guy, so I was good with this. So then I kind of got this leveled out to determine how much of a spacer I would need back here. <clears throat> now, what you also know or potentially wonder is, well, why didn't I put this all the way at the back? <clears throat> and I decided to put it there for two reasons. It was easier because I can't remove this bracket because the inner rail is actually attached through that bracket, and I didn't want to mess with that. But also, when you look at this chair, that pivot point right there in this neutral position that I have the chair that's directly below that point. So what that tells me is about right here on the channel, assuming that this chair doesn't move much, is where most of the load will be concentrated. <clears throat> so that's where I put the brace because the chair from the factory is really only supported at two points. There's just only about a quarter of an inch gap going across the floor, whereas now there's a bigger. 
So this is how I did the layout of my bracing. My goal initially was to reuse the factory mounting locations. However, the new chairs, their rails really weren't going to be easily compatible with the factory locations. I made these cross braces out of eighth inch steel. And then my standoffs are obviously half inch thick plate, three quarter inches tall, which is just how it worked out to get my seat level. So this, this piece welds directly onto the bottom of the channel of the seat frame. And these standoffs are what I weld to the seat frame in the back. I'm using grade eight bolts. And I'm dropping the bolts through these cross pieces and welding the heads because the seat clearance is so low, I can't get a wrench or anything up underneath the seat <clears throat> to remove and put the seats in. Otherwise, I would have welded nuts to the bottom of the floor pan. These year seats have seat belts built into them. I am not going to be using those seat belts. I'm going to use factory style seat belts that bolt to the floor pan <clears throat> in the original locations and also unplug the top plug so I can have three points. That does two things. I don't have to rework seat belts <clears throat> and I can just order the new ones which are pretty cheap online and it also allows me to have less worry about my my chair actually being secure to the floor pan the bracing is much thicker than the floor pan is the floor pans in the middle might be 19 gauge 18 or 19 gauge i can't remember they're fairly thin so on the bottom when i put the nuts on i am going to put oversized washers <clears throat> However, in the event of a crash, most of the force is going to be felt by the seat belt because that's actually what restrains you. And those, again, will be tied into the floor pan, so I'm not substantially concerned with the chair ripping out of the floor. Once I get both seats mounted with the foam and leather back on them, I will put the center console in the truck and determine what height I need to mount the center console. If you were going to use the, the later model style seats that actually have the seat belt integrated with the back of the seat, and you would not be tying the seat belts into the floor pan, I would much be much more cautious with how I mounted the seat because the seat in its entirety will feel the impact of a crash. <clears throat> and if you do use those seats, you want to be extremely cautious on how you secure the bottoms of the frames to the floor pan. And of course, if you are going to make modifications like this, understand that you're doing it at your own risk and your consequence is pretty close, <laughs> which is the steering wheel and the dash. So you wouldn't think that doing a seat swap would require so much effort, but between the wiring and the framework of the seats, it does take quite a bit of effort. And obviously if you're gonna be welding, you gotta break down the seat anyway so you don't burn up your fabric whatever that fabric might be. So it is a fair amount of work just for a seed swap. I'll tell you, when I saw the wiring harness attached to the bottom of these things, I thought, eh, the bench seat's not sounding too bad, so. You can see this is what it looks from the bottom on the other side of the finished chair. I had to be pretty careful not to burn through the bottoms of the rails because the rails are substantially thinner 
they're like sixteenth of an inch thick. Just wanted to show real quick how I did the jumper seat slash console frame. Uh, I did it out of angle. I welded some nuts to the front side and then I made some studs out of these all thread links. I just cut them to the height I needed. I'll show you on the bottom in a minute. But the bolts come up from the bottom on the center console. And where it is should be out of the way of my transmission, my drive shaft, easy enough to get to. And I screwed quarter inch holes in these tabs and I'm gonna use grade eight hardware and all this as well to fasten it down. That's basically how it sits in the truck. So I'm gonna pop up in here to kind of show you how much foot room I have, hopefully, to give you an idea. Now, I do have the seats all the way up and they're topped out position. I did that because on the driver's side, if I raise the seat up all the way, my feet are really comfortable on the pedals. I'll show you that too. So I wanted to show you how I fit. I'm 5'10 and like 150, 60 pounds or so. I'm going to be putting vintage air up underneath the dash here, but even with my feet totally extended like this, uh, I'm really comfortable and I'm going to not be anywhere near kicking the blower box and all that. My left foot is the same thing. It's fully extended and I'm barely touching the um, the firewall at the bottom and at some point in the video I am going to mention that I'm going to go the tilt column and I'm also going to downsize the steering wheel this is a, the big wheel the 17 inch wheel so I'm not sure if I'm going to go the 16 or 15 but I am going to downsize at least one and as mentioned I'm going to have a tilt but I'm not a huge guy, so even this isn't like super uncomfortable for me, but my, let's see if I can do this and you can see, my foot is pretty comfortable on the gas, and I just have the LS pedal screwed to the firewall right now, it's not in its final spot. I just did this for an idea, and my brake foot's it's pretty comfortable. It's kind of awkward right now because I got my left leg kind of cockeyed around the side, but you get the drift. You know, if I was any taller than this, I would either have to modify my pedals, and you can ignore the, the clutch pedal because I got a 4L80, but if I was any taller, I don't know that I would go with this setup. Just because the backs of the seats recline so much, the way they're constructed. I will say when talking about, you know, my height in relation to what I would recommend, that's based on what is comfortable for my back. So I, I kind of like my seat a little bit lounged back to the rear. So if you like your seat kind of straight up more like the factory bench seat would have been when you angle the seat up obviously you get clearance back so those are just things to consider i mentioned it before but you know i've got the seats in the fully raised position so there's there's a lot of variables right so you could raise your mounts and have a higher seat as well you know if you wanted to be even higher than this so you know, when I mounted this, I mounted it in the neutral position front to back, but I didn't realize that they went up as high as they did. I knew they had adjustment, but I, I didn't know they had, had this much adjustment. You know, that's, <laughs> that's my hand that it went up. So these are just things to consider. I would say if you're a bigger guy, six foot plus, you might want to be hesitant about it. 
you know, before you go to the full effort on redoing the wiring and all that, you might want to just put them in there and try and make sure they're going to be comfortable. The, the farthest point sticking out is actually right there between the headrest and the, the top of the seat. So you're not going to gain much by not running head, headrests. Alrighty, folks, that about wraps this one up. If you liked the video, please like it. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe because it helps me make these videos to help other folks. I really appreciate all the support that the channel's been getting. Next up on the list is hopefully the transmission cross members coming in this month. If not, probably going to order a different one. And we've got two-piece valve covers for the 6.0. That might determine if I've got to shave the firewall a little bit and I got to figure out how I'm going to do the gas fill on the rear tank. So there's a lot still left to do, but you know, this was a major step in the right direction. Thanks everybody. And we'll see you next time.